Happy Thursday. Great to see you. As you know, on Thursdays, we take a look at our upcoming gospel reading for the week. And this weekend, we are in Matthew chapter 9, verses 37 through 38. If you were with me yesterday, you might recall that I mentioned this is VBS week at Zion. So as I record this early on Wednesday evening, I have to tell you, I'm a little tired and I'm finding myself with a little bit of mumble mouth. So this is take two on the recording of this devotion. I have decided there will not be a take three. If I fumble, stutter, or collapse, I'm just going to keep recording and post this puppy when it's done. That's just how my week's going. But it's a wonderful, wonderful kind of tired. Here is Jesus speaking. From the end of Matthew chapter 9, he says this, then Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Right after Jesus is done saying these words, we then get the 12 disciples named, and the Gospel of Matthew tells us that Jesus sends them out. He looks out at a harvest field needing workers. He looks out and sees all of these people who need to be blessed by having the good news brought to them. And he gathers his closest 12 disciples and he sends them. Sends them out to preach the good news, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and all that kind of important work. But 2,000 years later, guess what? As happens, this verse has important meaning for us too. Not just to know what Jesus did with his first group of disciples or with the harvest fields that were ready and waiting then. They also mean something for us. Because guess what? The harvest, that's all of those desperate to hear the good news, whether they know it or not. It is still plentiful. And guess what's also true? The workers are still too few. As soon as I saw these verses, our upcoming gospel reading, it reminded me how often I keep hearing this from our church body, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, or our district, the Missouri district, because they're working to address the same problem right now. An enormous harvest field waiting, but too few workers. Now listen, when our church body decides to tackle a problem like that, yeah, there's work that they can do, work that you and I probably can't do on our own. They're going to make goals and try to raise funds and all sorts of stuff, and that's good. But in individual congregations like ours, we need to play a part in that as well, how to recruit new workers for the church how to raise up the next generation of teachers and preachers and musicians and youth directors and all that kind of stuff. But just like individual congregations need to play a role, also individual congregational members, people like me and you, we need to play a part in that as well. So I really believe this is true. The very most important thing that you and I can do and I'd encourage you to think about doing this sometime in the very near future, is to notice in a young person a desire to serve, both serve the Lord and also serve his people. And don't just notice it in your heart, but say something about it. Encourage them and pray for them. As you've already heard me say, this is VBS week. And in addition to the many wonderful adult volunteers that we have at Vacation Bible School at Zion. Our sanctuary is full every day, not just kids who are here to participate in VBS, but a whole bunch of junior high and high school students who are serving as volunteer helpers. Honestly, without them, we couldn't do it. They do a huge amount of the work of guiding even littler kids around our campus, and they're doing a great job of it, participating, singing, guiding. It's really a beautiful thing to watch. And so one of the things that I've gone on my way to do this week is to notice a couple of them that I think have 
the gifts that God could use mightily in full-time ministry. And I've said something about it. It's a wonderful job to have heard the good news, Jesus' death, so that sinners might be righteous. Jesus' resurrection, that we would have hope for a glorious future. It's a wonderful job to have been given that good news, then be told to take it to someone else. That harvest, it is still plentiful and the workers are still too few. Would you consider joining me in encouraging someone? I really wish that you would. We're going to close today with this prayer. It is the prayer from the front of our hymnal for seminaries and colleges of our church. We pray. O God, source of all abiding knowledge, through word and spirit, you both enlighten the minds and sanctify the lives of those whom you draw to your service. Look with favor on the seminaries and colleges of the church, blessing those who teach and those who learn, that all the baptized may apply themselves with ready diligence to their tasks and faith, faithfully fulfill their service according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hope you're having a great day. God's peace and blessings to you. See you soon.